हेलो गाइज दिस इज़ माई फर्स्ट यूनिटी वीडियो ट्यूटोरियल सो यूनिटी जस्ट रिलीज एन अपडेट विच इज़ द थ्री पॉइंट फाइव अपडेट एंड इट कम्स विद सम रियली कूल न्यू फीचर्स आई थॉट आई टेक अप अ टॉपिक विच पीपल नॉर्मली ड्रेड इन गेम प्रोग्रामिंग एज माई फर्स्ट ट्यूटोरियल एंड मेक इट सिंपल इनफ फॉर रेगुलर यूनिटी यूजर्स टू अंडरस्टैंड so i've been playing around with this new feature called the nav mesh generation which is a really really cool feature so what this basically does is that it creates something called as the navigation mesh so this mesh is basically an area defined in your level which your uh npc uh will be able to roam around in it's the area where they'll be able to freely roam around it uh to give you a better idea what i'm going to do quickly is uh show you what i've got here so what i've got is a very very simple unity scene i just have a model of a villa that i use for a project and a directional light for some lighting uh absolutely nothing else just uh make sure that uh, your static uh check box is checked when uh you import which of your level uh so because navigation meshes are generated in editor and not runtime uh it it makes it only generates navigation meshes for uh a static mesh uh this is not a runtime feature uh please note that uh so just get your level inside the scene uh and uh, check the static symbol mm now what we do is you just go to window and open up your navigation bar which is right here and make sure you check the show nav mesh symbol here um uh, and then by by selecting the villa just hit bake So there you go. Uh, there are some really cool properties in this, like the radius, height, max slope, step height. This basically defines how you want your navigation meshes around uh, your level to be generated. In case you want a character to jump off a certain place, make sure you increase jump distance, and you know if you want him to drop off a certain place, increase drop height and stuff like that. So as you see, my entire level has this. sky bluish tint this basically is the area where my navigation meshes will be allowed to roam around in pretty cool okay so now that we have got our navigation mesh set up what we'll do is get a really really simple ai done so for the first tutorial what i had in mind was uh, let's uh, so let's just have an npc follow our main player something that you see in uh, something that would be relevant in most of the ai situations that is a follow case where say in a first person shooter you want the enemy to follow you and shoot you this is where you would start from so what i'm going to do is uh, come back to inspector okay uh okay, i'm just going to turn this off for now and i'm going to create a simple first person controller in my scene this is just a standard asset first person controller prefab i'm sure everybody is aware of this just to make it such that he is facing say the screen perfect oops oh let me just check if it works yes sir it does okay so now we have a first now we have a player character in the scene that's going to be controlled by us now what i'm going to do is to get a simple ai so all this ai wants to do 
is to run and catch the player no matter where he is he's going to use the navigation mesh that we generated on the level to find the shortest distance between him and the player and he's going to get to the player so for the ai what we'll do is get a third person controller into the scene because it'd be really cool to see an actual guy running towards you um let's get him properly set up there you go so we need to make a few changes to the third person controller because we don't want to be controlling him uh so what we do is if you go to the inspector let's just get rid of a couple of components that has to let's get rid of the character controller and i'll tell you why we're going to be doing this if you're wondering how is he going to move around without a character controller uh just be patient for a second and i'll tell you why get rid of the character controller oops sorry get rid of the third person script first because the character controller was dependent on the third person uh controller script it wasn't letting me remove that so now we've got rid of that get remove the camera as well because we don't want to be needing the camera because we're not controlling it and finally get rid of the character controller um now what we do is we add a component to it go to your component go to miscellaneous and add a nav mesh agent so this is another really cool component that unity gives us right now so this is like a controller like a character controller but for an ai so uh it has a lot of the same features like radius speed blah 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 that uh our uh, character controller has so the first thing that we do is make sure that we set it up right let's just get it to look yep that seems fine and we the base offset so that it's covering him and there let's all right yeah i think that will do for now okay so now we've got a first person character set up now we've got our third person character set up and we've also got uh, an nav mesh agent uh, component attached to the third person controller so what we'll have to do right now is to write a simple script so i use c sharp i hate javascript so uh for those who use javascript it's a really simple conversion because it's you know so i'm just going to call it uh, this script is basically an instruction for the our agent character to follow our player so what we're going to do is just let's just get it set up attach the follow component and do it as of now this does nothing so we're going to write a script right now so this is going to update it's a simple script I'm just going to show you how quickly you can actually set up. There might be many better ways to do it, but for all those of you who want to get stuff set up really quickly, uh this could be of help. So what you're going to do is do a simple get component and it's going to be type nav mesh agent dot destination. This will equal um okay so we need to get reference to the player so what we do is uh let's just do a public transform m underscore player now what we need to do is we need what we are basically saying is set the destination of the agent to the player's position 
That's it. I'm just saying, get your nav mesh agent and set its destination to the player's position. So no matter what happens as of now, uh, the agent is trying, will try to catch the player. Will try to get to the position where the player is at any given point of time. So this is not going to be really useful for say something like a shooter so for something like a shooter what you probably need to do is uh, run around the level and just check if you know he can see if the agent can see the player if he can see the player then you shoot but um, I don't think it's advisable to jump to that point right now it's uh, it's always advisable to move step by step especially in something as complex as AI because uh, you understand so much more so but nonetheless let's now that we have this done let's go back into our scene no errors so we're good to go and if you notice we have a transform variable that's empty so we attach our first person controller oops there you go so i think we're done mm, yes we're done so let's just run it and see if it works So ideally I should be able to see, ah there you go, if you notice he is running. So because I've disabled all of the animations for him and all of the scripts and if you notice, uh, one second. if you notice my animation component on the third person controller, it's set, the default is set to run and run is set to loop that's the reason why he's actually running nothing else all of the positioning is controlled by my nav mesh agent component which is which gets instructions from my uh, follow script so if we go back if you see he will run towards wherever we go so let's do something stupid and just check if it works let's fall down mm. okay oh yeah stupid of me so there is no nav mesh <laughs> attached there so that's why he didn't follow so yeah i think that works um get back to me if you have any doubts regarding this this should be pretty straightforward for you guys to understand uh this is my first video tutorial so i hope i was of some help um thanks a lot and i'll see you soon with some other tutorials